Welcome to the official Autodesk Inventor podcast. This is episode number 37, and my name is Garen Gardner. I'm an Inventor product manager for Inventor. And um, this episode, we're going to talk a bit about adaptivity and a handful of other little tips. Adaptivity is one of those features that's been around really since R1. And uh, as a product manager, I talk to a lot of different Inventor users, hear things that they're doing, see things that they're doing. And, um, you know, I, I see both good and bad practices. But quite often, one of the things that... Um, that I don't see much of these days is adaptivity and there are, some many, there are many good things about adaptivity there are some things that you've got to watch out for but I wanted to go through some of the things you can do with adaptivity show you where it's, it's really useful and some ideas that you may be able to use in the future with it so I'm going to start off you'll notice that I've got just a, a little little valve here and I've got a couple of components I've got a cylinder with a hole through it I've got a, a knob on the side you'll notice that I can just pivot the knob around I've got some constraints in place, so really nothing too fancy, and um, and I want basically I want to be able to connect up my knob to my valve so that I can turn my knob and close the valve. And this is uh, this can be a bit of a challenge because I may know where I want this to be the the knob to be positioned, and I may know the the closing state, but sometimes to figure out the connector that's going to fit in between here and and work perfectly is a little bit of a challenge. So one of the ways to, to easily solve this is we can just move some of these things around a little bit. Um, to solve this a little bit easier, I am going to use contact. And what contact allows me to do is push this valve closed, and when it comes in contact with the cylinder, it's going to stop. So this will be a good way for me to figure out where that stopping place is. Now, I could add a constraint, but sometimes those constraints are a little difficult based on the geometry. So I'm going to come in and grab that uh, that valve. I'm going to right click and you won't be able to see it, but if you come down and put it and select contact set, we're going to do that for both the cylinder and for that valve. So you'll notice now that I drag this around and even though they come in contact, it's not doing anything and, and I often get questions, you know, why isn't it stopping right now? Well, we also have a contact solver that you want to turn on. So you'll notice if you go to the inspect tab, you have activate contact contact solver and the reason this is a two-step process is you can turn several things on to be in contact but you may not always want it on solving for contact so as you're doing design work you can turn that initial contact on and off without having to actually change that setting per component or per occurrence so now with contact on you'll notice as I move this into the cylinder that it stops right when it comes in contact of course I don't have any problems with this component coming in contact so we're in pretty good shape. Now I also want to be able to create that linkage that's going to go between uh, between the valve and the knob. And one of the things that I've also done to make this a little bit easier is I've created a view representation with the part sectioned. And a, a easy way to do this is I actually went over to the view tab. I created a new view rep, went over to the view tab, and you can do a quarter or in my case I did a half section specified where I wanted to section my part and then I sectioned it locked down that view rep so now at any time I can just toggle back and forth between that sectioned view rep and the non-sectioned now when you do this you may notice that all these components automatically get sectioned and something like this particular valve I don't want it to be sectioned so one of the things that I can do is I can come into uh, my manage tab and in fact let's see here into the tools tab we'll go into document settings and I'm just gonna tell it in the model that we don't want it to participate in an assembly drawing section now this will affect what this does in the drawing so if I create a drawing and I section through this this valve isn't gonna be sectioned either so keep that in mind if um, if you just want it for concept and then later on you want to be able to turn that off then you'll want to go into the document settings but um, gives you a good idea of how you can lay out some of these things use view reps and then be able to just dynamically see how they come together so now that we've done that now that we've got kind of the layout in place we want to be able to create a layout or a, an adaptive component to connect here so there are a couple of different ways that I can do this and the the way that I'm gonna first start out with is let's create a new component and I'm just gonna name it something like link and I'm going to put it in my assembly. Now I may not know exactly how this is going to be constrained in here. There may be some unknowns as far as what I'm going to do with this. So I'm just going to draw a line out here and we'll make sure that uh, let's look straight at this particular sketch. 
so we can see where we're drawing this. And I'm just going to do, I don't know what length it is, we'll maybe exaggerate this a little bit so it's a little too large. And we're going to return up, and I'm going to create a couple of, of pieces of work geometry. I'm going to put an axis at the end of both of these lines. And that just helps me constrain this in place a little bit. And it's a little hard to see, but we'll take a look at that in just a second. So I'm just going normal to one of those planes. I've got two axes. I've got one there and one there, and I have this line. So now, once I've got this in place, I, I just want to connect uh, connect these all these components up now with that line. So probably now that this is in contact, I'm just going to right click and ground it down. You can't see it, it's off screen, but I just right click, hit ground. So now I can't move this around. And this may be, I may kind of choose where I want this this uh, lever or the the knob to be positioned. So you know, let's let's say that we want it positioned somewhere right there. We'll also ground it down so everything's locked down to its closed position. And then, in fact, we probably not paying attention. We probably want that to be in a little different position if it's in its closed state. We'll do something like that, and then we'll ground it down. So now I'm going to come in and add a constraint here between this this axis that we created on this line and that edge. And we'll apply that. And you can see that it's kind of moving all over the place. We haven't locked it down based on the, the plane that we want it to be on. So let's do that one more time. I'm just going to say center to center. And I don't have it updating, but um, that's OK. Let's also take a look at the plane. And we're going to constrain that with a mate constraint. And we'll take a look at, in fact, I'll just use angle and select one of these faces. Let's just zoom in there and grab. Doesn't want to grab that. There we go. We'll grab that flat face. There we go. So now you'll notice that as I grab this and I drag it around, angle probably isn't the perfect one we probably want it to be mated but that's okay for right now we can see that I can spin it around I can see what it's gonna look like but it's not really tied down yet so if I try to add in fact let's um, let's change that let's edit that and let's lock it down so that I don't have to worry about it jumping all over the place alright so I can see it's obviously too long I can spin it around and if I come in here and try to add another constraint between this axis and this hole, we'll do it over here, uh, you'll notice that it's going to come back with an error message. It's not going to be able to do that. Because this is, um, even though we haven't dimensioned this down, it's looking at that as a static size. It's not allowing to, to adjust it. So what we can do is we can actually come into that part, and we're going to tell it we want this sketch to be adaptive. And it's a little hard to see. Let's see if I can do it from here. I want that sketch to be adaptive, so you'll notice that I get this little icon next to my sketch, 